2022 has been quite the year and we're going to be looking at, well, the most expensive cards that you might have missed, been like, what? Or just been like, oh, I can't afford that. Let's dig on into this, shall we? One big 30% guys have not smashed the ever living crap out of that subscribe button. Smash it so we can climb up the 100k ladder here. Oh boy. This is uh, quite a little interesting article here for the big, awesome, expensive cards of the year. And um, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not surprised by a lot of the stuff that you're going to see in this article because. As they say, bling is supreme in the minds of the competitive Yu-Gi-Oh player for some reason. You know, shiny cardboard doesn't make you better, but I guess it makes your wallet hurt more, so you're happy? I don't know, man. So 25 here, well, this is interesting, is going to be King Regulus, Forbidden Droplet, and Charging Gaia. Excuse me. And yes, that is Charging Gaia, the Fierce Knight from the Speed Duel Tournament Pack. All right, now, here's the thing when you look at, like, the tournament... OTS store packs, um, you know, those cards aren't necessarily, like, crazy powerful, especially, like, the Speed Duel ones. They're powerful in Speed Duel format, but they don't really affect modern format all that much. So, considering the fact that you just smashed three cards back to back to back here, all within the 52-ish mark here, and, I mean, let's be honest, all three, or at least two of these cards, have been pretty big metagame contenders. I mean, Regulix is falling. Look at that. Our market price of 48. You remember when Regulix was the supreme king at, like, the 60-plus dollar mark? Ooh. Now, this one's always going to be a kicker here. Uh, if you guys want a cheap star, I like to invest in it. It's a super poly target. You know, these things are 60 dollars as of making this video here for market price. I don't know. I still think that keeping an eye on this or having one of these, um, I mean, I think the card looks great. Collectors or Emergency Teleports, no surprise to this. After this card moved off of the list, um, E-Telly has been nothing but an annoyance in the modern format. And I, I've heard a lot of players calling for, you know, limitations back to E-Telly, but once again, I don't think it's going to happen, but you've had a price tag on this thing at 60 whole dollars. Okay, makes sense to me. Exosister packs, you're going to see a lot of Exosister cards on here, for sure. The entire Exosister like hype train for splite right now du -du 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 -du, to the moon as of making this 62 dollars for the collector rare packs uh, i i can't say that you love to see it but i'm not all that surprised now ultra rare lava golem from the speed duel tournament pack Here, here's the cool thing about this now, hypothetically, these were kind of hard to get because it is an or a Speed Duel tournament pack card. You only get those through the Speed Duel cards. Once again, you saw the Charging Gaia up there, but this Lava Golem, I picked up three of this a while back because I wanted to have them because, you know, as much as I like the Seeker Rare, I, I just think that in the long term, when you have an Ultra Rare card from... <laughs> Uh, you know, a higher rarity pack, like a side pack here. Of course, I think this is going to gain value over time. So they have done nothing but drop over time here, which I do think is very good. But as I'm making this, you see a list of market price at 65. I'll take it. Ghost Rare Cyber Dragons. You know, most of the Ghost Rares from Ghost from the Past too have been a little bit all over the place. Uh, you have seen some settling in today's market and things, but a majority of the Ghost Rares are probably going to make this list because they were all the chase cards in the set. Like, I, if you're watching this video and you're like, oh, there's not going to be, it's a majority of higher rarity stuff as per course here. But yeah, 73 bucks. I mean, you're already competing with the, uh, what is it, the DRO for this, and then we can't even touch the Altis for the originals. All right. Tournament Pack Ultra Lure of Darkness. Speed Duel Pack also brought this. You know those allures have a market price at $75? Alties are floating around the 150 plus mark for like unlimbs, all right? Like if you're going to touch allure of darknesses in higher rarities, it's actually really disgusting. All right, like it is not something that the average duelist wants to find himself doing. Like it's, and you know, once again, when you get that alternative uh, hollow to the ulti, um, I don't know. I, I think the Speed Dilter pack rarity is comparable in some sc uh, scans here. Uh, Mikhail, or Mikhilis, 
however you want to pronounce it, $84 as I'm making this video. Yeah, once again, uh, we've seen that Exosister hype generating, man. Like, so many people are looking at that splite set to come in the future, Power of the Elements, and of course they're really excited. You know, this is one of the, this is one of the biggest, saddest, I, I, like happy things I am. I am glad to see that the 25th Dark Magician has bumped down in price. You know, we've seen this card fall. I oh, mean, did it start at 200? I know like around release, they hit the 140 mark and then they just constantly went down. You're looking at about $92 as of making this video. And also to be fair, like the set itself, Battles of Chaos, wasn't a traditionally like super good set by a lot of players. A lot of players looked at the set and went, eh, you know, it's kind of nice to have the nostalgia Blue Eyes and Dark Magician support fueling back into, you know, the player base to make them happy. But yeah, this card has had a long journey down. Foxy Tunes are now at $90 for the collector's race, considering the whole fact that this engine has pretty much taken over the competitive scene as I'm making this video. Yeah. Starlight Alba, Renatus. You know, <laughs> I'm going to say this with cor uh, Corvature here. This is one of the nicest Starlights out there, but it's one of the cheapest price points, which is actually amazing, by the way. You can pick up Alba Lenitus for $93. Red Eyes Black Dragon, $96. Once again, those Ghost Rares really did topple down in value. I, I do think that that's kind of cool, though. More affordability is good. Thursdays are at 100 right now, um, to be perfectly honest with you. A lot of the hype that was centralized around the Dinomorphia deck, even though, like, even I was a really big fan of this deck, I've had it, I've played the control variant, I played the control variant a lot online, just to kind of have fun and play testing. but you die to some of the weirdest, most random crap when playing that deck, and there's not really a lot you can do about it, like, a, a well-timed Raigeki ruins your day. You know, and you're probably like, oh my god, like, who's playing Raigeki out here in the year 2022? I asked myself that same question the same three times I've lost to it, all by different people. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a thing. Blue Eyes Jet Dragon, wow, this is $102. You go, Blue Eyes Jet Dragon. Even though the card isn't, like, one of the better objective cards in the format, I mean, once again, how many Starlights has that been that are underneath, uh, or about the $100 mark? Collector Rare Enchantresses, the K Queen of value. $123. Her, her ultimate rare version has like pushed this down so much, which is a really good thing to be honest with you. Uh, of course, the right of Armesiers coming in about pretty close to the same price here, actually. Really? The Toon Dark Magician has a price tag of $144. What? Why is this card so much, I, I guess, max or rarity tunes at the end of the day? That's some crazy value there. Starlight Illusion's still $180. That's pretty surprising to me. All right, we're really revving up now. $190 for the Blue Eyes for the original art. I'm not surprised about that either. Starlight Regulus, still over the $220 mark. Fun fact, you used to be able to trade three copies of Regulux to get a Starlight. Not anymore, since Regulux has fallen so much. I'm glad to see a Starlight's maintained. Starlight the Dark Magician, still $228. Surprisingly, um, once again, do not underestimate the collector's card side of this market. I know a lot of players will just look at Dark Magicians and go, oh my god, you know, it's a Dark Magician card, get it away. And it's like, yeah, but like, your casual to intermediate player base loves this stuff. Especially when you make this available in a higher rarity. Oh yeah, they're gonna love this, man, for collector's purposes. Magnificus, $232. This card's rise to power has been nothing but absolutely amazing to watch it just topple over some of the titans. Dark Magician Girl, $265. Now, this is this is so amazing to me. This started off at $500 and has just shot down. Like, the market's doing really good on making sure that these stay cheap. Um, Starlight Ghost Bell. $308. Yeah, considering like hand traps will always be, you know, the value out here, but these have been rotating a little bit in value. Uh, last but not least, Starlight Dehark. Currently with a price tag of $312, that's probably not going to last. We've seen all the other charmers out here going up in some pretty crazy values here. Um, is there anything that can topple Dehark this year? I have no idea. Now remember, 
Maybe we'll get a ridiculous unannounced chase card. Ooh, uh, like 10,000 Dragon or the Starlight Dragoon. But uh, you know what? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Market price of $1,400, by the way. It's so ridiculous. What do you guys think about the top 25 cards of 2022? Please comment down below. Tell me to say. Make sure you guys smash the little crap out of that subscribe button. And I'll see your beautiful faces back here later in the day, guys. Peace out. Patrons, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.